Hello, my fellow engineers. When you think of France, what comes to mind? Beautiful architecture, fine wine, rolling vineyards, and of course, the country's rich history. France has it all, right? And let's not forget about Napoleon, the military genius who pretty much conquered all of Europe. Well, almost. Some might argue about France's military history. You know, the old French surrender jokes. But let's be real, France has always been a serious military power. Now, what if I told you that they also have a fighter jet that resembles their famous military commander? No, not in height, though the Mirage 2000 is kind of compact for a fighter jet. But in sheer capability, the Mirage 2000 is France's answer to modern air combat. It's a formidable fighter that's earned a reputation for sparking fear in its adversaries, much like the famous general. Developed during the Cold War, this sleek aircraft was designed to keep Europe and its allies safe. And let's just say it didn't disappoint. It wasn't just a pretty face in the skies, it was a force to be reckoned with, helping maintain the balance of power throughout Europe. It all started in 1965 when France and Britain agreed to develop a variable swing wing aircraft. But in typical fashion, France soon decided, you know what, we're better off doing this on our own. So they withdrew from the project, leaving Britain to team up with West Germany and Italy, ultimately creating the legendary Panavia Tornado. Not a bad outcome, but that's another story. Believe it or not, the Mirage 2000 wasn't the first choice for the program. Dassault had its sights set on the Mirage G, an ambitious variable swing wing jet that, on paper, seemed like a game changer. It could go from interceptor to ground attack with a flick of its wings. But there was just one problem. The French Air Force didn't want an over-engineered transformer. They wanted a Mach 3 fighter that could dogfight with the best of them, not some jack-of-all-trades master of none that couldn't keep up in close combat. So, despite all the fanfare around the Mirage G, the French military basically said, thanks, but no thanks. And, as you might expect, trying to tweak the Mirage G into something more practical made it two and a half times more expensive than what they were planning with the Mirage 2000. Imagine paying extra for a car that can't even take you where you need to go. In the end, it was the Mirage 2000, the second choice, that won the day. It was cheaper, easier to maintain, and much more aligned with what the French Air Force actually needed. An interceptor first and foremost, with a solid secondary ground attack capability. So, in true French fashion, they took a more practical route, ditching the costly experiment for something that would do the job right efficiently and effectively. As with many European fighter jets, the Mirage 2000 sports a delta wing design, borrowed from its older cousin, the Mirage 3. You know, if it ain't broke, why not make it faster? However, delta wings aren't perfect, so Dassault engineers had to sprinkle some advanced avionics magic into the mix, notably a fly-by-wire system to tame its stability issues. This system essentially allows the plane to think faster than the pilot, like having a co-pilot with better reflexes. The result? A jet that can turn on a dime without going into a nosedive. Then we have the famed Coke bottle fuselage. Yes, really. It's not because they like soda, it's an engineering trick called area ruling that helps reduce drag at transonic speeds. Think of it as the Mirage sucking in its stomach when it hits Mach 1, which lets it slip through the air more efficiently. As you know, aerodynamics are very important in a fighter jet. And to improve aerodynamic efficiency and to allow the aircraft to maintain higher speeds with less drag, the aircraft has a smooth blended wing to fuselage transition rather than sharply defined. A design like this minimizes turbulence and increases aircraft stability at higher speeds. Another engineering solution to reduce drag was utilizing sharp edges and a streamlined fuselage to reduce air resistance. It was very important to reduce drag in order to improve fuel efficiency and maintain a supersonic speed without needing excessive thrust. A delta wing design allowing the blending of the wing root and engine is that it could accommodate more fuel. It can actually carry over 900 gallons of fuel, more than 200 gallons over the Mirage 3. The delta wing design also reduces the wing load. The Mirage has a takeoff weight of 30,000 pounds, making it more maneuverable than the F-15 and similarly sized F-16. 
The tail fin is also noticeably taller, which allows the pilot to retain control at angle of attack past 25 degrees that are assisted by small strakes mounted along each air intake. But one thing that is not visible from the outside is a relaxed stability. You see, Dassault engineers have embedded into the design a certain degree of related stability as the center of gravity, or neutral point, is placed ahead of the center of pressure, enhancing maneuverability. I know it's a different explanation, but basically it helps the aircraft turn better. Having delta wing design with no horizontal stabilizers, the Mirage is equipped with elevens on the trailing edge of its delta wings. The elevens control pitch and roll, which are critical for maneuverability. While being well suited for delta wing configuration, the elevens allow the Mirage to be both highly agile and maintaining high speed stability. Another important feature of the wing is the leading edge slats. A delta wing configuration is not ideal for low speed flights, but thanks to the addition of the leading edge slats, it helps improve the airflow over the wing during low speed flight and high angle of attack. This resulted in better maneuverability during combat and helps the aircraft maintain control at lower speeds, particularly in dogfights and during landings. Although a somewhat simple and cost-effective design of the aircraft, it implements composite materials that were used for fins, rudder, elevens, and various access panels giving a weight saving of some 100 kilograms. The air intakes of the Mirage are very interesting. It's a semicircular design on either side of the fuselage with a shaped leading edge. These air intakes manage the airflow of the engine at various speeds, especially at supersonic speeds. The sharp edges compress the air entering the engine, helping the aircraft achieve better engine performance at high speeds by controlling the airflow pressure. This design feature improves supersonic efficiency while avoiding the need for more complex variable intake designs. It's like having a personal assistant that is preparing the air for the engine. It is powered by a Snecma M53 engine capable of 20,000 pound per foot of thrust with the afterburners. Combining all the design features is the aircraft's fly-by-wire system. It has two distinct modes of operation, one for unrestricted operations within its allowed flight envelope and is used when carrying only air-to-air -air weapons. The second one is used when carrying fuel tanks and air-to-ground missiles. It functions as a G-limiter, preventing heavier munitions from damaging the pylons that they are mounted on and preventing them from potentially being pulled off of the pylons by excessive g-force. Speaking of munitions, it has a DIFA 554-30mm auto cannon and 9 hard points for weapons payload, 5 on the fuselage and 2 on each wing. It can carry all the missiles there is from air-to-air, air-to-ground and laser-guided bombs. And yes, you guessed it, being from the Cold War, it can also carry nuclear weapons. It seems like it was a requirement that it seemed like it was it seems like it was a requirement that the planes from that era should carry those types of missiles. It seems like it was a requirement that the planes from that era should carry those type of missiles. The Mirage 2000 entered service with the French Air Force and quickly proved its worth in various combat scenarios. One of its standout moments came during the Gulf War, where it played a crucial role in providing high altitude air defense for the U-2 spy plane. Its ability to patrol at high altitudes and protect one of the most vital reconnaissance assets. Its ability to patrol at high altitudes and protect one of the most vital reconnaissance assets of the coalition forces highlighted its strategic importance. In the Bosnian and Kosovo wars, the Mirage 2000 showcased its versatility in combat operations, conducting airstrikes and supporting air superiority missions. It wasn't just a high-speed interceptor, it was also an effective multi-role fighter capable of handling complex missions in tough environments. Another significant operation was during the Libyan conflict under Operation Harmattan, where the Mirage 2000 was used to enforce the no-fly zone over Libya. With precision strikes and air patrols, it helped neutralize the Libyan Air Force and ensure air dominance during the NATO-led intervention. You could say the Mirage 2000 had a no trespassing sign in the sky, and it meant business. Beyond France, the Mirage 2000 has been extensively adopted by air forces around the world. It serves in countries such as India, Peru, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Brazil, 
Taiwan and Greece. Each of these nations found the Mirage to be a highly reliable and adaptable platform, using it for a wide range of missions, from air defense to ground attack, proving that this French fighter jet is not just a national treasure, but an international one as well. While the Mirage 2000 has been officially replaced by the Dassault Rafale in the French Air Force, it didn't just fade into the background during its service life. In fact, the Mirage was extensively upgraded over the years, constantly evolving to meet new combat requirements. There are numerous variants of the Mirage 2000, each tailored for a specific role. Over time, it received upgrades to its electronics, sensors, radars, targeting pods, and cockpit systems, all aimed at boosting its combat capabilities and reducing the pilot's workload. These upgrades helped ensure the Mirage could keep up with modern warfare's increasing demands. But perhaps the most interesting and formidable variant is the Mirage 2000N. And yes, the N stands for nuclear. This version was specifically designed for nuclear strike missions, capable of carrying the ASMP nuclear standoff missile. And there you have it, my fellow engineers, a deep dive into one of the most iconic fighter jets ever to come out of France, the Mirage 2000. From its humble beginnings as a backup plan to the overambitious Mirage G to becoming a key player in multiple combat operations around the world. This sleek Delta Wing jet proved time and again that it's more than just a Cold War relic. It's a masterpiece of engineering that stood the test of time. Although it's now retired from active service in France, the Mirage 2000 continues to fly with air forces across the globe, proving that great design and clever engineering never truly go out of style. So the next time someone cracks a joke about French military prowess, just remind them about this little powerhouse that could and did dominate the skies for decades. Until next time, fly high and stay curious!